Hi, hello. Tuesday. Favorite day. I uh, like Tuesday, Testimony Tuesday. <laughs> so you guys are all doing well. Yeah. We, uh, coming on. Not on time again. <laughs> Hi, Peggy. Good morning, good morning. Hi, Julie. Morning, everyone. I just Happy got your Tuesday. message that you're going to be 10 minutes late. That was 15 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, got another good testimony this morning. Um, the Lord, again, just so good, so faithful. So looking forward to sharing that. Um, and we are on 1 Corinthians 15 and Psalm 42. So we have that as well. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mom, Grandma. We will, uh, yeah, let's get going. We're going to pray and uh, get going because I think Sarah maybe has a testimony too. And 1 Corinthians 15 is long, a lot of stuff in there. <laughs> it is um, long. I listened to it with the kids last night, dinner, and I'm like, wow, this just keeps going and going and going. Yeah, you can probably, as I say, study that for quite a while. There's a lot in there. And um, anyway. All right, let's pray. All right, Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for Christ being resurrected and uh, what that means for all of us. So that is victory. And Lord, that, Father, that Jesus defeated the enemy and we all have hope in that and so father may that just continue to become more and more real in our life as we read your your word as we experience just your goodness all around us and uh, lord as your truth just continue to be revealed so father I ask your holy spirit to speak to us this morning meet us right where we're at may your word continue to give us hope and encouragement fill us up with your love and uh lord may uh May we just continue to go out and spread spread good news with all those that we meet, Lord. And uh, may we just continue to, uh, yeah, be encouraged and filled up every day. So I bless this time, commit it to you, and uh, we thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, good morning. Hello. Got some mowers going and everything else. Yeah, but the we whole are, crew showed up today. We are outside. Walking. I had a mower around me this morning too. We have our Tuesday morning Bible study, and I'm like in this giant parking lot, and the guy like comes mowing, and he just mows around my van for a while. It's like, so funny. They have uh, a job to do, and they're yeah. just gonna do it. And it's like, let's start here, right where this guy's at. So anyway, it's kind of funny. Um, uh, anyway, so uh, testimony. Do you want to share yours, or do you want me to share? Or? Thanks, Katie. I do love this shirt. One of my Fast Away clients gave it to me as a gift. <laughs> and thank you, Julie. Yeah, I'll share mine first. So cool. I was showering, as you can see, my hair's still wet. It's so humid here. My hair usually dries really fast, but not here. Not right now. Um, and I'm drying off. Oh, I turned off my water, and I heard somebody listening to something on their phone. I thought, oh, that's cool, because I do that a lot of times as well. Like when I'm getting ready, getting dressed, drying off, stuff like that. It's just a great time to be listening to a podcast or sometimes I'm listening to the scripture for the day, whatever it might be. Well, I kind of tuned in a little bit and I'm like, oh, that's the Bible. She's totally listening to the Bible. Then I'm like, ooh, what scripture? And then I'm like hearing little bits of it. And I'm like, oh, that's really good. But I don't remember reading that anywhere. I don't know where that's at. And, um, and then it said chapter 34, Job something. I go, oh, it's Job. And then when I came out, I just said, um, thank you so much for playing that in the bathroom. And I said, I don't know a lot of, or I said something like, I'm assuming you're listening to Job. And she said, yeah, do you know it? And I said, not that well. And she goes, yeah, it's a hard chapter. And she said, I'm, I'm going through the Bible. I just listen to it when I have spare time. I listen to a little bit of it um, just throughout her day. I think, you know, she's kind of like, oh, I'm cooking dinner. I'd seen her last night actually in the bathroom too. <laughs> and she has small kids. So, you know, I think yeah, you, know, you, you think about any, yeah, you think about any time that you uh, have just a little like time where you're, you can listen to something because you're not, I mean, anything else on your phone. Anyway, 
Um, she said that this was this was her word of wisdom. She said she has gone last year. She went through the Bible, listening to it, and then this year she just did the New Testament. But she's already done with that, so she must get. She has a good habit of making it a part of her daily routine, and she said. But then I found that if I didn't have a plan, I don't do it. I need to have a plan set before me mm. to be committed to whatever she's doing. In this case, it is listening or reading the Bible. Yeah. And I go, that is really good. And I didn't actually even tell her about what we were doing because I knew I needed to get back here and get ready. Um, <clears throat> but she was just super encouraging. She's like, yeah, it really, you know, it changes, changes her outlook each day. And I'm sure she, looked, she has young kids, like I said. So that's like a whole nother season where you're just like, oh, I got no time for myself. How am I supposed to read the Bible? And she's found this way to, to get it in. I love it. So here it, she yeah. is doing her makeup in the bathroom. I think we might be the tenters. Okay. Or somebody sleeping oh, in a yeah. tent. Yeah, which I'm like, huh. Oh. With the family. <laughs> it's like a low of 70 at night. It's, it's warm. So kudos to them. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So anyway, I thought that was fun. It was just encouraging. Like, yeah, somebody else is broadcasting the Bible and, and in the bathroom. I, I love it. She doesn't know who's behind all those closed doors. You know, there's like all these individual showers and she's just right out there in the countertop her makeup listening to Job. It was good. I got to go back in and read 33 though because I was getting ideas. So Julie, it's funny that you mentioned the Nourish to Flourish group because I was getting <laughs> ideas. He was talking about <clears throat> uh, feeling as, as youthful as a child or something like that. I'm like, oh, I, I need to go back in and look at that. All right. That's good. Well, uh, my, my testimony this morning was at Panera Bread. Again, I some reason have a uh, anointing at Panera Bread. You have I, an expectation. I do have an expectation, expectation that there's going to be God encounters there. That's where it was yesterday as well when I met something. that. What does expectation do? Invitation. Invitation. Yep. <laughs> so expectations, invitations, power of our words, power of our thoughts. When you know that the Lord's going to meet you somewhere, Yeah. he always does. And uh, so in my head, it seems to be Panera Bread keeps checking that box. <laughs> so uh, anyway, that's my ad for them. Uh, so this morning I was there, we did our Tuesday morning Bible study and I was um, doing our Zoom call in the, in the van and um, I just, as I'm sitting there, I'm noticing people coming in and out and going into Panera Bread and all that stuff and um, I felt there was, a, there was a truck that pulled in. It was like a older Chevy Silverado truck and it reminded me of something like my Uncle Arlen had back when I was young, you know, like the old Silverados, um, pretty squared up boxy. And it was in, it was like, it was all kind of rusty and all that stuff down in Florida. I don't think it really rust, but they just, the paint was faded. Yeah. And, but it just, something about it, I just thought it looked cool. It was just a short box, like truck guy gets out of it. But it's like one of those things that, you know, it's, he just kept it together, I think, or whatever it is. So he goes in and I just noticed the truck, kind of noticed the guy. And then I'm noticing on that, but I just, that it come out. So anyway, Better study. I went in, got some coffee, and I was sitting there, and I kind of recognized the guy, and I saw that he was um, in the corner on his computer, and then he, and I was like, oh, he's coming out, and I just felt the Lord was like, you should go talk to that guy, and I'm like, no, I'm gonna wait for him to come out, and so I just sat there. I sat at a table, and I had probably waited for like five minutes. So I'm like, huh, maybe he's not coming out. Maybe he went somewhere else. I saw him getting up from his table. Anyway, I think he was getting coffees and all that stuff. So I think he was doing, but. He, um, he comes walking out and he's kind of like, a, I don't know, he, he didn't look real approachable, kind of maybe a, a little bit tougher looking guy. And uh, he had like, anyway, so he comes walking out, he's got his, you know, his stuff and, um, and, I, and he came out the other door. So I saw him and then I like, oh, I so saw I kind of walked toward him, toward his truck. And I was behind him a little bit and I just, the other thing I noticed is that for some reason the word Mark came to my mind, hmm. so I thought maybe his name is Mark. And then I, sometimes when that comes to mind too, I'm just, and I, I'm sharing this for you guys to give you encouragement of like, if you want to go out and do this, how I process or how the Lord speaks to me. And um, so I thought Mark. Well, then I also thought of who do I know that's a Mark and what do I know about that person? Oh, I like and that. Uh, chart thinking about Mark. Okay, so the person I'm thinking of a Mark, he's a construction guy. He loves the Lord, and uh, he is just like, I just I just feel like I just kind of had the heart for that guy. And uh, some of you may know the mark I'm thinking of. Yeah. Um, Brian Stordell does. 
anyway, he reminded me of that mark as well. And so I approached him and and I said, hi, I'm, J I go, excuse me, sir. And he kind of stops, he's just at his truck. He opens up his door, he's putting his stuff in. And he turns around and goes, hi. And then I go, hey, I'm Josh. And I kind of walk up to him and he kind of looks like he's like protected. Like, why are you walking up to me? Like, and I, then I stopped, I stayed my six feet back because I, he had a mask on, then he took it off and put it in his truck. Oh, okay. But then I just stayed back from him and go, hi, excuse me. I, I go, my name's Josh. And uh, is your is your name Mark by chance? And he's like, no. And I go, okay. I go, well, hey, uh, I just I, I, I pulled out a twenty dollar bill. I go, I was just praying and asking the Lord, um, who to who he highlighted. And he highlighted you. And I said, the Lord just guided me over here to give you this twenty dollar bill and let you know that he sees you, he knows you, and he hears your prayers. And the guy like looks at me. And just like, just, I mean, just like, alien dumbfounded, but then taken back. Okay. And then he's like, whoa, this is strange. This is really <laughs> strange. I'm just like, I just smile. I, I, you're getting used to that response I, now. I'm like, I'm sorry. This is probably freaking you out a little bit. I just, I just want you to know that the Lord, uh, he sees you right where you're at. And then he starts to cry. <gasps> like his eyes start watering. And he's like, oh man. Oh man, I can't believe this is really happening right now. I'm just like, yeah, you're like he's just taking more. some deep breaths and he's like, oh, wow. and then I'm like, I go, uh, I go, what's your name? And he goes, Keith. I go, hey, Keith. <laughs> and he goes, I go, I'm Josh again. Just because I knew that he was kind of like, I could just tell like he was like, what is happening right now? Yeah. And uh, I go, I go, Keith, I go, the Lord sees you, man. He highlighted you to me, and I'm here right now. Because I could just tell, like, his heart was all of a sudden starting to open up. Yep, he's all softened. And I go, I go, Keith, how can I, how can I be praying with you? And he's like, oh, man. He goes, my, I've been in a relationship for 15 years, and I've just been struggling with it right now. And he just starts sharing his heart. His heart about, it's torn right now. He's, I don't know if he's married, but he's been in a relationship with a woman for 15 years. And he just shared with me that it's been really hard that she struggles with alcohol and and it's getting seems to be worse and it's been an ongoing thing and uh, it's it's really breaks his heart and she's hard on him and just it's a, a bunch of different things it's not healthy it's just not healthy and he's like I've been struggling with do I leave do I, I can I take this anymore or do I need to leave I suppose if he leaves who takes care of her that's kind of it and uh, and he's he was at he said that he just made it he talked about um she had her grandkids with so i don't think they're both of theirs but it's her grandkids over and he's like you know she was drinking and it just wasn't i mean the kids don't know but he's like it, it wasn't good she goes he's like you know me i can have one or two and i i know i need to stop yeah unfortunately she doesn't have that she just keeps going and he's like it's just so sad and so he's like i don't know what to do for her and he goes it's just so wild that you're here right now because I was just praying for her and uh, and wow. I said well I said <laughs> Keith I go everything's changing from today forward Amen. the Lord hears your prayers and I and I just says do you know the do you know God and I just asked him that because I didn't know where he's at in his faith you know and right he's like well I I used to go to like a Baptist church a while back but I really haven't for a while and he's he's just like I go he goes, I, I, I really just don't, I don't believe in that religion stuff. He goes, I'm more of a spiritual person. And I said, that's right. I said, I'm a spiritual person too. We're all spiritual people. You have a spirit. Yes, we all have a spirit in us. I go, religion is from the enemy. Religion is rules. It's like things that we have to do it's to prove ourselves. Yes, that, that's the only, that's what we think that by doing these things that it's going to get us to heaven with the Lord. And we don't do those things and then we shame ourselves and then we just distance ourselves yes i said rules and religion is not from the lord and uh, he just is like he lights up he's like yeah i go no you i said the only way is a relationship with jesus christ and i said jesus christ is the one when you have a relationship with jesus christ everything in your life changes wow. i said that's what's happened in my life and that's why i'm here i'm following him and he had he showed me to come to you and just bless you right now and just show you that he is real and that he's he seeks you and that he wants you keith 
<laughs> and it's like he, Keith is just like I mean the poor guy he just like he's got a, he ended up grabbing a toddler's truck and he just keeps wiping his eyes oh, I mean, are you closer to him at this point or yeah still... we got we got a little closer okay. <laughs> and I'm standing outside of his truck and uh, oh. and I just was like Keith the Lord loves you man wow. he is so proud of you he doesn't he doesn't dwell on any of our past mm. he says today forward is with him and he just is like man he's like this is this is so awesome he says I'm like yes and I said, I just was like, Keith, I'm so glad that I met you and that the Lord highlighted you and that I got to be a part of this blessing. Yes. And he just is like shaking his head and nodding. And I go, I go, the Lord's going to meet his, his uh, friend or whatever it is, his partner is Terry. Yeah. And he says, her name's Terry. And I go, right now he's in touch. <clears throat> so then I, he wants to pray for Terry, right? Then he just like starts sharing. He goes, oh man, he goes, this is just so important. It's just so good timing right now. He goes, I'm actually going in for surgery tomorrow for a cancer. I have cancer, something in cancer in his body. He points to his stomach. And he's like, and there's a procedure that's happening tomorrow where when they do that, then the cancer is going to be gone. And it's going to stop. I go, well, amen. The cancer's gone, I said. Yeah. And I said, well, Keith, I want to pray for that too. Do you know that God can heal that right now? Yes. And uh, he just is like, He's just shaking his head and he starts crying again. You know, I'm just like, oh man, I'm like, the Holy Spirit is here. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I love it because I'm going back to what you first said. He looked somewhat unapproachable. He didn't look approachable. I mean, he just Not looked like, like a, a guy who was going to to be so tenderhearted. No, he just, yeah. he was a tough guy, probably upper 50s, maybe 60, but in good shape, like, older guy that works I, I thought he probably works construction just based on his truck and I'm stereotyping him and just the way he was dressed like he yeah. had shorts on and a tank top like he was gonna go to work outside um, and he looked like he was a healthy strong guy I mean so anyway that intimidates me because you're like he's gonna be like more looks like a biker dude to me than anything and be yeah. like no I don't want to talk about this and then to have somebody like that open his heart like yes. that and start weeping in front of it just it's the Lord and so it just always shows me that the Lord is there and and to have compassion on him and just yeah he said he's going to a procedure tomorrow and yeah. I just was like wow and and so we prayed and prayed over him I said hey Keith is it okay if I put my hand on your shoulder he goes yeah and uh, uh -huh. just put his in my hand on his shoulder and and just prayed over him uh, releasing peace over him and that the Lord just continues from this day forward the Holy Spirit is in him, speaking to him, that he gets clarity and wisdom and that he knows what to do and what not to do and that he can love Terry well. Yeah. And that also we just prayed with for Terry, that right now that there's an awakening going on in her spirit, yes. that she knows her identity in Christ, that she knows who she is yeah. and that the enemy has no more right in her life. And just to pre proclaim that over her and and then we just spoke to the cancer to be gone and that he is 100% healed. When they go in to do the test tomorrow before the procedure, they're going to be like, you're cancer free. I just was like declaring this stuff over him because it's wow. truth. This is who our Lord is, right? We're, we're reading about him raising from the dead. That the dead can raise. He can heal cancer. Yeah. And so, ah, powerful. Um, got done praying. Uh, he, I said, I still have the $20 bill. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like Keith, you got to take this. This is a memory stone. This yeah. is, you keep this. And he kind of yep. like hesitated. Yep. And I'm like, no, no. you got to keep this. This is you got to remember this happened. This is yes. your thing to go like this really did just happen. Yeah. And um, and I'm like, let me write my number on. It. He goes, oh, he gave me the twenty dollar back. And he's like, all right. And I just wrote my name, Josh Johnson. Put my phone number on the twenty dollar bill. <laughs> and I said, keep this. And I and I said, just remember, yeah, on every one of these bills, it says, in God we trust. Yes. Trust in God. And uh, man, it. Yeah, he like shook my hand. We did not hug, but I think he wanted to hug me. Um, but I, he, I said, just reach out to me. I go, there's going to be a testimony. Please share it with me. Yeah. I know the Lord is going to be victorious in all, all these things we prayed for. Yes. Um, so yeah, he, he just says, oh man, this is such a so such an incredible encounter. He said, and so that's how we left it. This, awesome. was, this spoke to me in so many ways because I I've been I always struggle with this. It's fear. I'm sure you guys look on the outside and it's like, why do I have doubts? Why do I have fears? Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, you know, before these things, it's like I'm sitting there going, I don't know, Lord, is it this guy? Is it really this person? Is that one? Yeah, he's taking too long. Yeah, he's taking <laughs> too long. Maybe not. So I just want to give that as an encouragement to each one of you. When you feel prompted to do something like this, um, please do it. You won't be disappointed. 
and uh, I just I just hope it brings you guys encouragement. I'm encouraged, right? You can tell every time this fills me up, and it just shows me that so many of us are in need of an encounter with the Lord. We all want that. It doesn't matter where we're at. I mean, I, I would love it if somebody came up to me and gave me a $20 bill. I said, the Lord told me to come talk to you. Yeah. It encourages me every time, so we all need it. Anyway, so that's the encounter. Praise you, Lord. And that, that's what, that's what he, he just kept going. He goes, I can't believe this is happening. This is so incredible. I, he just kept saying to me, and I'm like, it's the Lord. The Lord sees you, Keith. He's here, yes. And I'm just like, praise you, Father. Praise you, Father in heaven, for this encounter. And so, uh, so good. That is so good. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, so on that note, it, it was confirming because we, when I met with my men's group this morning, 15, what kind of stood out to me is just, I, I really think it was more verse 2. Oh. And, and then the last one, 58. Okay, I have 58. Yeah. And I think I had two as well. Just, just because when I was reading this, I don't know if I yeah, overlooked I didn't have this. Two and <laughs> there you go. So the Lord's speaking to us, which is so good, and it says, "Now, okay. brothers, I want yes. to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, and on which you have taken your stand." I mean, that right there. Remember the gospel of Christ. It says, "By this gospel you are saved." Amen. By Jesus. And then the part that jumped out to me: if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. I mean, hold firmly to this word, this yes. truth, right? Otherwise, you have believed in vain. I just, that part of it hit me as like, whoa. Like, I don't want to be believing in vain. Like, kind of halfway believing, part of the way of believing. I believe this part of it today, but then tomorrow I don't. It's like, I want to hold, firmly hold on to this truth that Jesus died and rose again for me. Died and rose again for you. Died and rose again for Keith and Terry. And uh, all of those that we've been able to bless. And so I just want to firmly hold on to that truth. Because the enemy is going to continue to try to deceive me and take that truth away. And i got to be like, no. And the way I firmly hold on to it is right here. Because uh, in my mind, there's a battle always going on until I read the truth. And then the truth continues to align with truth of where yeah. what is real. And so that's my application is continue to read the word. Continue to have these encounters. To just go out and love people like the Lord would, and um, and then that the Lord just continues to have His grace pour out on me, I mean, grace upon grace. Mm -hmm. So I pray this in Jesus' name, and over all of you as well, that His grace is is what we need in this moment all the time. Amen. Comes a lot right, more. We got mowers coming. I'll just read 58. So, my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. And we've just or been in vain. Ha yeah, or in vain. We've just been having a lot of conversations lately about, you know, what do we do next? What is our plan? We thought we had a plan, and now we're thinking that we don't want that plan. That, that that's the world's plan that's not the lord's plan and are we just settling because that's what everybody i don't want to say everybody else i'm not talking about you guys but you know what what's expected of the world and what we what we know and it's this constant renewing of our minds and trying to wrap our brains around how do we live differently how do we help others live differently how do we continue to live differently whatever it might be and so this just brought me encouragement that nothing we do for the Lord is useless, is in vain. It's, you know, that's why we're here. That's our big why. That's uh, why we are, uh, why we're made for, why we were created for such a time as this. I, I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> it's pretty straightforward. Yes, yes. You know, I just was thinking about, you know, working. Like, you know, many of you go to work and are working and doing that too, and so are we. And uh, that the Lord is uh, oh closer. Anyway, just that that is our worship too. Like, yeah. Just when we work, work for the Lord, worship the Lord, work out the Lord. And uh, that is worship. <laughs> so good. Well, I think we're going to come.
cut this off because of the mower. Yeah. It's gonna come right in front of us. Uh, so Father, thank you for today. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you for just the wonderful works that Jesus Christ has completed and done for each one of us. And that we don't have to strive or do anything different other than just focus on Him. Yeah. And uh, just know that it's all because of the Lord. And uh, give thanks for that and live out our days worshiping him, giving him all the praise and glory. So Lord, I thank you. I thank you for uh, just your faithfulness. Whenever we step out, Lord, you are there. Whenever we step out in love, you are there. So bless each one's day today. May your Holy Spirit be with us. May it lead us. May it guide us. May, you, may we be bold and courageous for the faith, yeah. for you, Lord. And uh, go love those in front of us today. I pray this all in Jesus' name. All right, love you guys. Thanks for uh, joining in there, and uh, go bless our mower lady here. <laughs> See ya. Bye.